for a lag compensator, in comparison to lead compensation, a lag compensator is a low-pass filter, if you remember, and it works through attenuation at high frequencies and amplification at low frequencies. It turns out that it gives lower bandwidth, and that's a problem because it, it, it's actually a slower response time um, in reverse to what the lead compensator would give. But it can attenuate response to noisy signals, and so um, it can be pretty handy for that. But one of the difficulties is, is it can produce a persistent yet small error in the transient response with a long decay time. And that's because the pole zero combination isn't near the origin. And that's, that's true whether we design it using the frequency response methods or with the, uh, with the previous root locus techniques. If we go back and look at the lag compensator and rewrite it in a time constant form, just like we did with the lead compensator, we get this value. Notice that it's j omega t plus 1 divided by j alpha omega t plus 1. We use alpha here and then beta in the other one. Um, sort of a notation to match these uh, out of convenience. But fortunately, the design process is far simpler for the lag controller. And then really, that's uh, then, then for the lead compensator or the lead controller. And that's just like it was before with uh, the previous arrangement. Um, in, the, in the root locus analysis. We're really not looking for a huge phase modification, but we are looking for a high frequency attenuation and a low frequency amplification, and we're going to, to go for reducing that steady state error. So what you're going to find is, is that, that we'll, the, the purpose of the gain compensation actually goes from being um, working on the steady state error to actually improving the transient response. So kind of curious. We'll set gain to, to, so we'll set the gain k on the plant to satisfy the steady state error specifications, all right? And then once we've done that, we'll plot the body diagram, and then we'll look for the frequency where the phase margin is about 10 degrees greater than the phase margin that would give the tra desired transient response. And the critical thing of it is, is the lag compensator is going to work on the, on the gain side of things, but it also affects the phase. So we have to add this fudge factor of 10 degrees in, very much just like the lead compensator where, uh, as we were talking about before, the pole and zero of the lag compensator needs to be located at, at, at some place substantially lower than the new gain crossover frequency. And in other words, if it needs to be placed pretty close to the origin in the root locus. And another, what I'm trying to say is, is that the pole and zero need to be located a long ways uh, to the left on the Bode plot, away from the, the dynamics of your system as defined by the plant. We'll choose the break frequency of the zero between one octave and one decade below the new grain crossover frequency. Once we've done that, we'll determine the attenuation necessary, necessary to bring down the magnitude at the desired, desired grain, gain crossover frequency to zero dB. And that's so that we get the gain crossover frequency, of course, to be there. And that will tell us uh, uh, what alpha will be, because the at attenuation that we're going to need is actually minus 20 log base 10 of alpha. Then once we've got the pole placed, because we have alpha, we can place the zero, um, and we're set. So in any case, the system should be simulated to confirm the steady state error specifications are met. All right, and then. With the lag controller, if we do it this way, with the pole and zero set fairly close to the origin like this, or but if you think of it as a root locus, um, then we should not have to hassle with the gain anymore. All right, so our previous system, let's take a look at it again. We have 100K divided by S, S plus 36, S plus 100, and we're going to reduce the state state error by a factor of 10 over the gain compensated system. And we're also going to shoot for having a, a percentage overshoot of 9.5%. First step is to have a gain K of 583.9, and that'll give us our 9.5% overshoot. And so we're looking to adjust our the gain of our system to give us our 9.5% 9 9 overshoot, and that tells us that our our steady state error is actually 16.22 in terms of the uh, steady state velocity error constant. To get a tenfold reduction, we need a tenfold increase in this steady state error constant to 162.2. And you might wonder, well, why would we expect that to be? Because this g, right, has k in it. And if we say limit as s goes to zero is sgs, well, you have 100k. And then this, right, this is divided out by the s. So then we have 36 and then 100. And 
and we'd have k on top here, and then we'd have the hundreds would cancel out, and we'd have 1 over 36. And if we use, we use this arrangement um, of, of trying to increase the case of v from what we have before to what we need, we just need to increase this value of k by the same factor of 10. The gain of the system then should be increased 10 times to 58.39 from what it was before, 583.9. So here's what we had before, a gain of 583.9. And if we uh, increase the gain by a factor of 10, well, that's what it looks like. Um, the, the phase doesn't change at all, but our, our, of course, our magnitude plot does. Careful look, though. If we actually look at back and see what we've got, we trace across here our 180 degree line, if I could draw a straight line, that is. And then now we say, all right, well, that's the phase crossover frequency. And we go up and we look, and here's our zero dB line. Well, we had some gain margin here, but we don't anymore. The system has actually gone unstable. And so not only will we have to fix the system, um, we're going to also have to correct the instability uh, via the phase, uh, phase shift. So our phase margin uh, for, uh, that we're looking for is 59 degrees, and that's based on what we want. And we're going to increase this value by 10 degrees to 69 degrees to compensate for the introduction of lag compensator and its nonlinear effects on, the, on both the phase and the, and, the, uh, and the gain and the magnitude of the system. So look, we're going to find the omega that gives us a phase margin of 69 degrees. So that's, a, that's a, about 111 degrees with a minus sign. So you can see by the red line on the phase here, right? And you can see where that's an intersection. We can see that the omega needs to probably, that's where omega we're interested in. That's 9.8 radians per second. We want the magnitude of this plot to go through 0 dB at this particular point. So that's where we want to define our gain crossover frequency. And if we actually look at what we've got, it's actually positive 24 dB. So this lag compensator has to put in, has to drop the, the system, the gain of the system by 24 dB at this particular frequency. So that one is, that's kind of where we're going to be working at it. So we'll place a zero of the compensator a decade below the gain crossover frequency. All right, so we know where the gain crossover frequency is going to be. 9.8 radians per second. Notice that my my horizontal axis has changed here. There's 9.8 radians per second. We go a decade below. If you don't remember a decade, we just divide by 10. So then we place a zero here at, at 0.98 radians per second. It's just that simple. So one part of it is done. That tells us that our compensator gain needs to be at 20, minus 24 dB. All right, that's going to be our zero break frequency of 1 over t, where we need a compensating attenuation of minus 24 dB gain must be reached in our compensator. So we're going to say that t is equal to 1.02 because of our gain crossover frequency of 0.98 radians per second. And we find our alpha by noting the compensating attenuation of minus 24 dB. Remember, this is what we wanted. The original system had 24 dB in, in excess. We wanted to drop that down to 0 dB. So we see we, the compensator has to give us minus 24 dB. That's our compensating gain. And this is our the gain crossover frequency we're looking for. We'll place a zero here. Compensator gain needs to be minus 24 dB. T is equal to 1.02. Minus 24 dB is equal to minus 20 log to base 10 of alpha. Alpha is 15.8. We've got alpha and T. We're already done. This place is, lets us place a pole at the break frequency of 0 0.062. Our final controller is then 1 divided by 15.8 times the where the the zero is located. Notice that's a decade below the, the gain crossover frequency that we've picked. And we've found what the, where the, the, the pole needs to be based on the value of alpha. And that comes from our compensating attenuation that we need. So this is our final system. We've run our gain back down from 583,000 uh, 583, all the way down to 36,955. And notice where the, the zero and the pole are at. Notice that they're both fairly close to the origin in comparison to the 36 and the 100 poles. So let's look and see what we got. Uh, for our steady state error, well, we hit it pretty much on the head. 162.2 is what we were going for. We got 161.5. The phase margin is pretty nice as well. It's 59.2 is what we wanted. We got 62. 
The percent overshoot is 10. May have, when we wanted 9.5, not bad. Peak time is 0.25 seconds. This is the, the original system. Notice where the closed it poles are at. This is the system is, is stable. It also conveniently is told you uh, is telling you that in uh, MATLAB. If we actually adjust the gain so that we get uh, the behavior we're looking for from the system with steady state error, then suddenly the system is unstable. Well, we know that because a couple of closed it poles are on the right hand side here, just barely uh, using the root locus plot. And, well, if we go back and put in the zero and pole for our lag compensator, remember it's aux, O-X for aux, and um, sure enough, the system becomes stable again, and we get kind of a curious behavior in our phase, phase plot, but we get a, a gain margin of 22 dB and a phase margin of, gain margin of 22 dB and a phase margin of 63 degrees. This is step response of the original system, step response of the unstable system, the gain compensated system, which is obviously unstable, and then this is a step response of our system with the compensator in there. You can try it out for yourself. You'll, you should find it's much easier to do than the lead compensator. Don't let the kind of the formality of how it's derived in these pages in these notes to you know kind of throw you. It's much easier than it might look the first time you go through this. What you're going for is with this with this uh, plant is to obtain a tenfold improvement in the steady state error while still obtaining a 20% overshoot. And again, if you can read upside down, there's your result. What you'll find is the process is really uh, pretty much the same for PI, PD, and PID controllers. It's the same deal for, you know, with root locus. And the principal difference here is that the process is really far easier. So if you can do lag and lead controllers, you can handle all these other controllers. Um, you're not going to, uh, we're not going to explicitly cover a test on doing frequency response techniques for PI, PD, and PID controllers. Why? Zeger Nichols tuning. We can do it another way. Okay. But you could really, and also you could really do it very quickly from using the lead and lag controllers. So, hopefully you're able to do the problem objective and uh, the exam practice problems. And we've shown the, ex the use of the frequency response method in choosing an appropriate feedback gain to meet a particular transient response requirement, and shown how to introduce a lead or a lag controller to modify the transient and steady state response characteristics without affecting the steady state or transient behavior. And one thing you want to watch out for, this material uses second order approximations in design. Um, if you have a very complex system with a lot of poles and zeros, it may not quite be adequate. You might have to go to a more complica complicated modeling scheme to actually make it all work. The frequency response techniques are not limited to second order systems, but our time response concepts are. So you know you can work in, in MATLAB and, and handle very complicated systems, um, kind of like the things I plotted from the last lecture uh, at the very beginning, um, talking about the impedance analysis and all of that. But the time response concepts are limited to second order systems. So the idea of settling time, uh, bandwidth, uh, and all of those things are all second order phenomena. One last thing I'll make a, just a quick note of is that keep in mind that when we talk about, um, if you look in NICE, you'll also see lag lead controller design. And I used to always teach this, and I don't anymore. And it's because you can actually use gain plus lag or, or gain, good grief, gain plus lead to actually, to actually give you a controller. So you can either use gain plus lag or gain plus lead. There are many books that teach a lag lead controller, and I don't, I don't particularly encourage that. Uh, in this particular notes, but just to let you know, you may see that someday, and it's it's just a combination of these two techniques. All right, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.